Hello, this is Nathan with MeetRx.com, and I'm here today interviewing one of our coaches. Her name is Tatiana, and she is based in Thailand. She has quite an interesting background as well. So I'm going to jump right in here and ask you, well, tell us about yourself a little bit. Yeah. Hi, uh, thank you for inviting me. And um, well, um, I guess my lifestyle falls into my health condition a lot. And while I'll be explaining a little bit um, on how I end up, you know, being a coach, so you will know more about me. But um, quickly, uh, six months ago, I came to Thailand um, just for months. And now I'm stuck here. So, and it's a paradise island. So, I'm, I guess I'm lucky. I guess that's a nice place to be stuck during the whole coronavirus thing. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Well, my first question is um, what, were you, what was your health like before going on a meat based diet? Um, I guess I have to start from my childhood. So when I was born, I had a blood infection and I was introduced to antibiotics, quite strong one from like, you know, first year of my life. And I guess that was the first reason why my health was um, compromised. And um, I was quite, you know, sick and um, tired child, like not really serious conditions, but I didn't have enough energy to do sport or, you know, be crazy and active like other kids. So I was focusing on studying and um, then I kind of, you know, used to it uh, that I didn't have enough energy for, you know, crazy parties or anything. And it was still all right. I was doing fine. But when I was 28 years old, um, I got a condition that is called bronchiolosis. So it was skin infection, like pretty much every month for a year. And it, it was horrible because approximately every second time I had to go to a surgeon to clean the, the wound, you know, and yeah. <laughs> so it was for a year. I visited many doctors, like all blood tests were okay, like no serious conditions, but it looked like my immune system was not coping with simple, you know, viruses or bacteria, some simple infections. And um, I couldn't do any better than just to lose my well-paid job that I loved. Um, I worked in Moscow back then. And I just, you know, moved to the south of France, spent there a few months, and all was gone. So it was even before I changed my diet, I was always, you know, kind of trying to eat healthy. I never really ate any junk food or anything like that. But still, like, I was doing okay, but I was chronically fatigued and I couldn't imagine, you know, how people can take care not just about themselves, but about family and kids. For, for me, it was like, you know, a close story. I was just, you know, trying to manage myself. So, um, yeah, I was 28 and after, you know, just relaxing time, this condition was gone and I realized that, you know, something is um, connected not only to um, lifestyle but also to nutrition and um, so I was back to job and I moved to London back then but at the same time I got a new condition it was um, Hashimoto and it was a new round of chronic fatigue so and again like I saw that I became healthier but in fact, no, like my immune system kind of started to attack my own thyroid. So it was autoimmune condition. Um, and I was put on uh, medications, on high, um, hormone replacement medications. And again, like I kind of learned to live with the condition, but I just, you know, had my work. And all the weekends, or like all the nights, I was just resting. So work and no fun, just work and rest. It was my lifestyle for a couple of years. So, and um, uh, yeah, and it was like that for a few years and uh, I ended up being vegetarian. So, and back then it was about six years ago. I didn't really understand why, but it felt natural for me. Now I do understand because when a person has a uh, Hashimoto or uh, hypothyroid, 
Uh, the body tries to save on energy and hydrochloric production is a very um, energy consuming process. So like it was difficult for my body to digest meat. And that's why it was easy, you know, for me just to, to skip the meat uh, from my diet. So, and back then I didn't realize that it was not a solution. It was like, you know, a plaster on the old wound. So it didn't solve anything. And of course, in a few years, I even got worse because I was not only, you know, lack of, I not only experienced lack of energy, but also I started to experience uh, deficiency in amino acids and protein because of my diet. So, and uh, I was doing like that for a few years. And three years ago, I moved to Thailand uh, the first time and life seemed to be better with sun, with no stress and uh, being vegetarian. And I was doing okay for about a year. But then after this year, I realized that again, like whatever improvement I had, it was short term. And I again, you know, felt fatigued. I couldn't hike, you know, a popular trial here that everybody can do. I tried three times and uh, only last time I managed, but like it took me twice as much time as normal people do on this trail. So, and then I started to question, you know, that it's not lifestyle, it's something else. And then when I started to question my diet, and again, like, I believe that nothing happens um, um, just, you know, spontaneously. Uh, everything has a reason. And um, I met a person who mentioned ketogenic diet to me. And his diet was basically all meat with some vegetables. And I was like surprised because I never heard before about that, that it's possible lifestyle and possible way of eating. Like everybody's crazy about, you know, vegetarian diet. It's well promoted. It's like propaganda. Um, and it was exactly two years ago. So, but again, like since I was living in a vegetarian community, uh, I've been vegetarian about five years for that time, even though like I could see that it was not doing me good in some way, but I didn't really connect the dots at that point. And I started to look, you know, uh, for information, what can be there. I started to study anthropology, you know, I started to find more information, was actually the natural diet for a human being. And it took me a few months uh, to realize that uh, maybe I was wrong, you know, in choosing my diet and like, I spent so much time choosing, you know, proper vegetables, fruits and everything combinations. And I was trying to get all the amino acids, essential amino acids into my diet. Uh, but I, of course, failed, you know, because um, I even had an Excel sheet where I had all food I ate, not just, you know, carbs, uh, protein um, and fat, but also amino acids, omega-3, omega-6. And I realized that if I try to put um, uh, to get enough protein from uh, vegetables, I get high in omega-6 and high in carbs, of course, because you cannot you know, like eliminate protein from plant-based food. And it didn't feel right. So, but I was stubborn. And um, what actually happened? Uh, since I tried like different plant-based superfoods, different stuff, I actually, um, compromised my gut health like completely. I got a new condition and it was SIBO, uh, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So it was a moment when I already knew about, you know, carnivore lifestyle, ketogenic lifestyle, that I couldn't eat anything except eggs and butter. So whatever vegetables or um, fruits I put into my system, even a small portion, in an hour or two, it gave me like so much pain, um, heavy feeling, and I felt like I better not to eat at all. So, and it's just illustration how partly stupid I was because I already knew, you know, in theory that it might have not been doing good to me. And, uh, but I was so stubborn and it was so difficult for me to change my mindset. Uh, because like all my identity was around uh, the diet as well. And I was uh, thinking that it was doing good to me and except that I was wrong. 
it was like a big thing. So, but I'm so glad I did it. And um, when I realized that only, you know, basically the only animal food I had was eggs and uh, butter in my diet, and only this food was doing good to me. And then it was like the moment that, okay, I give up on this vegetarian lifestyle. I tried to, to do it like low carb, but it didn't work. And um, it was June, 17th of June, uh, 2019 when um, I went to a shop, I bought a piece of liver. I started from liver <laughs> and started oh eating small pieces. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's a tough one to start with. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. I was lucky. I grew up in a place where um, offal is quite popular. And uh, for me, it, it was fine in terms of taste. And uh, it's, I also knew that it's easier to digest liver than just, you know, a piece of steak or even minced meat. So it was, you know, just because uh, after a person having been eating meat for a few years, um, there are some, you know, techniques that better to use to reintroduce meat. Otherwise, you know, like just the stomach will not cope um, well. And I had to learn how to introduce meat back into my diet in a hard way sometimes but i'm glad for that experience too because now i know and uh, now i can easily coach uh, people like me who haven't been eating meat for years and how to introduce it correctly ah interesting see that's good that's a bonus so i, I know i've heard certain uh celebrities who went on the vegan diet or went vegetarian they said when they reintroduced meat um it felt like a switch was flicked in their in their brain and and something turned on again but that was that what it was like for you um for me it was kind of two um stages first when i started to eat meat yeah i kind of immediately felt uh the energy and you know starting to feeling better physically and also, um, I have to mention that bef just right before I decided that, you know, the only way for me is uh, coming back to eating meat, uh, I realized that I had brain fork. By that time, I was in Mexico and I started learning Spanish and it would be my third foreign language. And I know how I'm able to learn a language. And I just realized that I cannot memorize simple words, that, you know, like I don't get simple materials. So brain fork is a is often um, a condition that develops um, with veganism and also hypothyroid also adds into this condition. And I was always relying on my you know, head and my brain. And for me, it was like one of the scariest things. So I felt like, oh my God, I'm not yet 40, but I'm about to develop dementia or something like that. So it was scary. And um, uh, also, yeah, my thyroid condition got worse when I was more strict vegetarian. So for me, these conditions kind of not immediately resolved, but uh, I first felt like uplifting feeling and uh, I had more energy. Uh, even my mood improved quite, you know, quickly, like I would say first uh, two weeks. Uh, but then um, what actually happened, since my body was not ready to digest, my digestion system was not ready to uh, cope with meat and animal fat that much. So I had to spend a few months uh, working with my digestion to improve it, to be able to uh, digest meat. But for me, it was obvious that, and I already knew what to tune uh, to make sure that it works. And also many vegetarian, when they start eating meat, during first two weeks, they feel really good because the body gets amino acids they were lacking for years. Uh, but then uh, kind of the digestion system gets tired and um, it needs some help. So, and if people, when they start eating meat again, don't feel well after, you know, two, three weeks, it doesn't mean that meat is not good for them. They just need some help, you know, with some supplements, with some um, techniques, how to introduce meat, you know, what kind of meat. And I've learned it myself. And I couldn't even uh, get supplements uh, that most people uh, get to help with meat digestion, like betaine uh, with pepsin. In Mexico, it was not possible. Nobody used it there. And uh, it, it was about two months to get it from the States. So I had to learn it without it. Oh, boy. 
What I've heard that um let's see, uh bone broth helps with gut health, doesn't it? Yes, it does. But uh it's a little bit different um story because with their stomach, uh, we need um, stomach acid to, pr- to digest meat. And bone broth, it's very good for gut lining. So it's usually, you know, uh, these conditions come together, like low stomach acid and um, compromised gut lining, like leaky gut. So, um, but it does help. But in the beginning, I couldn't tolerate it as well, because it's like packed with protein and it was hard. So for me, uh, the solution was uh, eating almost raw meat. Like I sous vide it and uh, that was the easiest thing to digest. Somehow uh, the stomach reacts better to uncooked meat. Wow. Yeah, I've heard a lot of carnivores uh, eat a lot of uncooked meat and, and they swear by it. They say it does, a lot, does them a lot of good. So um, now when... You, um, what, what would you say was your light bulb moment when you realized um, that the carnivore diet was the way you had to go? Was it, was it the, um, well, I'll let, I'll let you, you answer. Uh, yeah, well, it was that m- morning when um, I had a choice to eat just eggs because I felt okay, you know, eating eggs and that's it. And I was thinking, if eggs, you know, give me good feeling and everything else didn't, like, I asked myself, like, are you a logical person? You know, like, if you had any uh, doubts, your body really shows you what it likes. And uh, of course, it's kind of stupid just eat eggs and butter because you are like against meat, fish and other stuff. So, and it was a clear kind of choice but you know it was so mm, difficult to admit to people I was you know in contact with to my yoga teacher for example and everything and I was almost afraid about their reaction so uh, and now I understand better that this vegan propaganda it actually alters the mind and it's two process it's propaganda thing and also it's biochemical thing so when a person lacks um, some amino acids and it always happens on vegetarian diet um, there is not enough uh, amino acids for neurotransmitters and the biochemistry of the brain how the brain works how the mind works changes so people are more susceptible to depression you know to anxiety to feeling not comfortable and uh, confident like these things happen and once you start giving your brain what it actually needs all the things you know gets away and for me it was needed just a few weeks to get my biochemistry back to almost normal and then I was feeling fine and you know telling people that I've changed my diet completely they looked at me and they saw that they saw that I actually look much better and healthier and uh, more energized and my like hair improved and my skin improved like it could be it, it was actually obvious from my look that I was doing the right thing and interesting thing so um, I haven't been to Thailand for about a year and when I came back six months ago uh, I have many friends here and when they looked at me they kind of didn't recognize me I came like a different person and when I left I was like vegetarian yoga person and um, you know quite reserved and uh, different person so and when i came back and they realized that i changed my diet that i became a nutritionist basically like a nutrition coach and they started to listen to me and even my vegetarian friends they still haven't started to eat meat but uh they eat liver pate that i make for them They uh, in- increased the number of um, uh, and the sources and number of um, protein in their diet, and uh, they do feel better. So, and it all just happened because they looked at me. They kind of trusted my look and um, not even the way I speak or what I speak about, just just by looking at me. So it was the best selling point. Yep, that's true. They say lead by example. You know, you, you shouldn't uh, go around advertising because then people just get irritated. 
at you yeah. if they're not ready to change. But uh, if they ask you, what are you doing? You must be doing something right, you know? And I can tell just by our short interactions that you do have a glow about you and you do seem to be very energetic and happy now. So I'm glad to hear that. That's awesome. So can I ask you, what is a typical day of eating for you now? Well, um, for now, I start a day with a steak. And um, yeah, like I, I, I don't buy the concept of breakfast. So and it can be, you know, it can be early in the morning or it can be even like midday. I wake up at 6 a.m., sometimes 5 a.m. before the sunrise. So, and um, since I've been practicing fasting since recently, um, so if it's a day of fast and, and hiking, I don't eat in the morning. So I do a hike early in the morning, it's a few hours. And uh, only after that I eat when I feel like. So it can be one day, but I try different ways. Only steak gives me really good, um, good feeling. Uh, I tried eggs, I tried, you know, other stuff, but yeah, steak is my favorite to start the day. And then I eat a second time uh, in a day. It can be eggs with bacon, or it can be some different sort of meat. So yeah, like my diet is very limited, but uh, I get really everything I need. And I, I'm a big fan of liver. So <laughs> I do it a few, um, times a week at least. And I can do it as a steak or I can do it as a pate. Uh, I have my own recipe, like carnival recipe for pate. Um, yeah, and even vegan, vegan, vegetarians do like it. Wow, you'll have to give that to me because I really want to start eating liver. I know how good it is for us, but I just can't get past the flavor. Okay, <laughs> you must be doing something wrong here. So yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I've noticed that, that our diets, people seem to think that they're boring, but I have never felt as satisfied as I do when I have beef now, you know, and it just satisfies me. I think it's delicious. I feel good after. I don't need to lie down and, and you know, and relax or sleep after, you know, like I, I did when I was on the sad diet. So I don't know. I don't think it's boring at all. Um, I totally agree. And uh, what I've also noticed before I was kind of, you know, really into food. I had a few certificates from, you know, um, top chefs and uh, I was into food in some way. Uh, but now my concept changed. So now I eat to live, not, you know, living to eat. So, and um, after, I guess, six months of my carnivorous diet, I was able to introduce veggies and I tried it and I was happy because it was a sign that my gut uh, healed. And uh, I was, you know, eating different vegetables uh, and I didn't feel like eating fruits at all. Even if I had a small piece of fruit, um, I got nauseous. So my body indicated that, no, we don't need carbs at all. So for me, many things happen naturally. And I kind of learned to trust my body. And uh, so when I reintroduced vegetables, I didn't, stay, like, I didn't feel mm, satisfied basically. And um, I'm glad that I tried it once again, but both my body, you know, my uh, taste buds. So they tell me mm -mm, that's not good food for you. So that's why, you know, I eat a limited number of different meats. I don't even eat chicken. I don't feel like. For me, it's not as nutritious as, you know, red meat. Um, beef and lamb are my favorites. Yeah, I've noticed with myself, chicken and pork, they're, they taste good. But for me, they do not satisfy me. I'll still be hungry after. Beef and ruminant animals, I'm full. I can have two burger patties or one steak and I'm done for the day. I don't need to eat any more. So, um, but I wanted to ask you about the, the skin problems because I had folliculitis really bad when I, before carnivore and it's gone. I don't have it anymore. Do you know anything about the science behind why skin problems improve on the carnivore? Um, Honestly, I didn't really study this issue, but what I know from my case uh, that for me, like 
everybody has some bacteria on the skin and it's absolutely normal. But when the um, uh, immune system is compromised, so, and the microbiome is compromised in general, and it's also both like gut microbiome, you know, skin microbiome, it's all connected. Um, it, it's like not in balance. And um, these bad guys, bad bacteria, they can easily, you know, um, kind of grow and give you an infection. So, and um, it just, and the immune system is busy with tons of different other things because of un, um, unbalanced diet, because we have so much stuff that it's hard to process for our body, like carbs, like um, omega-6, like, you know, many different things uh, that are in plant-based diet and all the oxalates and all this stuff. Like, I was amazed how many. Um, and uh, so just, it's not enough resources for the immune system to um, take care of the skin. And um, it just happens uh, that, you know, these bad bacteria, they grow and the uh, immune system is late to react. Uh, and the infection happens. So I connected to you for the function of the immune system. Maybe mitochondrial health is here as well because it's also not enough energy and all these defense mechanisms require a lot of energy from the body. So I guess it's quite complex and uh, it's not just one thing. And maybe that's why uh, carnivore diet works because it addresses you know, the body as a whole in a holistic way. And it tunes you like here and there. And as a result, it's a nice sounding orchestra of health and um, homeostasis. Oh, nice. Okay. That makes a lot of sense, actually. I know the oxalates cause a lot of problems. They definitely do for me. So it's almost like an allergic reaction when, if you would get a rash, you would say, oh dear, you know, I must have touched or eaten something. So, and it's, it's funny that so many people say that, that their skin cleared up after they went carnivore and yet vegans are always complaining about their skin. So uh, there's definitely a connection there that meat heals. So, sure. and you definitely do sound like a coach by the way. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you about that. So as a meat RX coach, what value has MeetRx brought you personally? I'll ask you that first, then I'll ask the coaching question after. So what benefit has MeetRx brought you personally? Well, um, I was so happy to find a community of like-minded people because uh, I live in a community that, you know, where I'm like so different and um, it's, it's a nice challenge, but it's so important to have a support and it's so important to have, you know, speaking bodies and peers, you know, you can share, you can ask, and um, you can just, you know, grow with. And uh, when you feel that you're not alone and, and a part of the big thing, it energizes you, it gives you more motivation to do. And um, I was enjoying so much these uh, sessions with uh, um, Sean Baker, and uh, I have a marketing background, but like he's point of view how he looks at you know promoting uh, carnival lifestyle it's so deep and it's even beyond their marketing knowledge so it comes natural i guess and since he um, in contact with so many people so he uh, he was actually helping me to um, direct me in a in a way where i can apply my skills and i can um, even grow the community even more so for me, it was really beneficial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And he, he really does want to help people. Like he gives so much information away for free that other people would be charging for. And the MeetRx community really is that. It's a community and you can, like, like you said, it is hard when you have so many people around you in your own life that aren't following that diet. But to have friends, and I've made so many friends and connections through the MeetRx community now, so I know exactly what you're talking about. So I encourage all our listeners to definitely join MeetRx community and see what we're talking about. So, But I did want to ask you, the last question was about being a coach. What is your coaching philosophy? What would you, um, I, yeah, uh, advice would you give to someone who had the similar background to you? Um, 
Well, to me, the most important thing is health. Since I was lacking from being a child, and um, I don't understand that if we provide the grounds for the body to heal, um, and if we trust the body, if we give the body the right things and just, you know, observe, let, let it, you know, do the magic, then um, it's more efficient. Then we're trying to push like certain goal, for example, lose, you know, X uh, amount of pounds or anything. Let your body be in an optimal state and then all the conditions you have will resolve. Um, so that's my main philosophy. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. So, yeah, I, I really look forward to seeing you, more of you around the uh, MeterX community. And I hope that anyone listening that has a similar background um, can reach out to you and find you on the MeterX.com website. Um, is, there, is there anything special they would have to do to find you? Um, well, I'm the only Tatiana <laughs> there. And she spells her name, by the way, T-A-T-I-A-N-A. All right, so it's Tatiana Z on the MeterX.com website. If you would like to speak to her specifically and have her as a coach, you can do that through our, our website, MeterX.com. All right, well, it's been such a pleasure talking to you, Tatiana. And you really do sound like a coach. You really do have a glow about you. And you seem like a very happy, uh, energetic person now. I'm glad you were able to fix that through a meat-based diet. And hopefully we can share our message with everyone out there. I cannot agree more. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure being here and share. And thank you. All right. Have a good day. Talk to you later.